Hi! What fertilizer to use for your bonsai is an often asked question. Are your plants hungry? Do they need to be fed? Nutrients in a plant in a nutshell. A leaf takes up carbon dioxide, water and oxygen go out, and all sorts of trace elements go into the leaf, and under the influence of sunlight, we create sugars out of it. With those sugars, we have energy to build the rest of the plant. So go to the store, get some fertilizer, but then you get the package. What's on the label? I have liquid fertilizer used for flowering plants. I have solids for flowering plants, organic pellets, iron, rose fertilizer, and some chemical pellets just from a big bag at a big box store. It is going to be a bit of a theoretical. I'm not going to work on any trees today, but I am going to promise you there will be new things that you did not know about nutrients in plants. So which one is best for bonsai? All of them are suitable for bonsai. You do not need to buy specific fertilizer for bonsai. You can just buy any fertilizer from a store as long as you understand the labels. This is a dissolvable salt. 14% nitrogen, 7% phosphorus, 14% potassium, 3% magnesium. These are the organic pellets specifically made for bonsai. And what you see here is nitrogen 8%, phosphorus 4%, potassium 5%. It has an origin of plants. It has trace elements, mycorrhiza. So this is a much more complete type of fertilizer than the other ones that I showed before. So, very interesting you might say, but what does that mean to me? What should I look for? Should I have high nitrogen, low nitrogen, high phosphorus, maybe lots of potassium? And is iron more important than magnesium or sulfur? Let's delve into that a little bit. Let's have a look at what all these different elements mean for a plant. For this, I'm going to move into the shade and I'll see you in a minute. If we have a plant, Of course, a plant has leaves. And in the leaf, there's a lot of things taking place. Um, there is oxygen in the form of carbon dioxide going into the plant. There is water coming out of the plant. There is oxygen going out of the plant. And through the leaf stem, there's a lot of things going into the leaf. Um, water being the main transporting agent, but in it there's a lot of different salts. And this is where we will find our N, our P, K, M, G, S, E, calcium. If we look at these elements, those are some of the core nutrients. And we can split those up and we say those are macro nutrients and micro nutrients. This does not mean that these are more important than those. It just means that the percentage that you need of those is much higher than the percentage that you need there. So besides the macro and the micronutrients that the plant gets from the sap, there's other things of course that the plant needs. Um, to build a cell, effectively, everybody knows photosynthesis, water plus carbon dioxide plus sunlight, energy, gives us sugars and oxygen. This is what we breathe. This is what the plant uses to build their cell walls. Which brings me to the question, what are nutrients really? Um, is it food? Well, if we take the whole picture together, yes, it is food. But the reason why most animals eat is to get the energy. So, for plants, energy comes from the sun. Photosynthesis. This is why plants have leaves and this is how they get their energy into their cell walls. Everything else are just building blocks. Critical building blocks, but not food from an energy perspective. It really is food from construction materials perspective. So knowing this, now let's go back to the fertilizer. Let's go back to our nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. What do they do in a plant and why does a plant need it and why do we fertilize with it? Macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, nitrogen, protein, DNA, chlorophyll. These are the core things for a plant 
to basically stay alive. Energy accumulation, the guidebook, how the plant should function and what elements should be constructed and proteins actually construct part of the elements that are needed. Now if we look at phosphorus, for phosphorus it's part of the energy pathway, pathway. it is part of cell walls. So in a way phosphorus will make sure that energy that comes from sunlight is captured and transferred into sugars and at the same time it is part of the thing that keeps the cells together. So the whole structural part of the living plant. Then finally we have our potassium and that is for breathing. Yes, plants breathe. They do this by opening little mouths. So a plant has cells that are aligned like this on the leaf. And when it is very, very warm or the plant is dry, they are tightly aligned. But once the plant gets more water or it is cooler outside, they get shaped like this. And through this opening, you get oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange. So this is one of the core functions of potassium. Um, also, it is part of the energy pathway. And on top of that, it makes sure there is a balance between water and salts. Water and salts. So that's the role of potassium. Now we come to the micronutrients and we had our calcium, we had our magnesium and we have our sulfur. Calcium stabilizes cell walls. So effectively with a shortage of calcium, the cells become less stable and therefore you get all the brown spots in your leaf. Now magnesium is core to chlorophyll. And what we already mentioned before, chlorophyll is the way that the plant puts energy on the table. So quite an important element to have. And then finally we have sulfur. Sulfur helps with end fixation. So how do you get more nitrogen and how do you process the nitrogen that comes in through the roots? That's raw sulfur. Um, it is also part of our photosynthesis. And in the end, it is part of the health and defense system of the plant. As said, the big difference between macro and micronutrients is more in the amount of materials that are used or the amount of fertilizer that is needed than the importance. Nutrients in a plant in a nutshell. A leaf takes up carbon dioxide, water and oxygen go out and all sorts of trace elements go into the leaf and under the influence of sunlight we create sugars out of it. With those sugars we have energy to build the rest of the plant. Now if you look at your plants and you can imagine that if you take something that is very very high in nitrogen what you then get is very strong growth. Lots of proteins, a lot of chlorophyll produced and your plant starts pushing. Now if you are high in your phosphorus you are focusing on your cell walls, you are focusing on strong compact growth. Your potassium is very important to make sure your plant is resistant in a more dry climate. With these things you can start playing. Um, you will find that for many bonsai groups the balance between NP and K is quite important. However, for me it is not worth the time or energy to try to figure out which one is best and mixing up my own fertilizer. Instead I just go to a store and I get all sorts of commercial products and I use that. In the end, to the plant, it doesn't really matter. And then there was this other thing that some plants do quite abundantly. And actually in bonsai, some plants are specifically bought for that purpose. And yes, I am talking about flowering. Some our plants like to flower. And you can use fertilizer to stimulate plants to flower. And how you do that is magic pea. Adding phosphorus will stimulate flowering in some species. In fact, some other species, for instance the wisteria, you lower your nitrogen to get flowering. So what you there do is you reduce the pressure to grow, you increase the building of cell walls and flowering structures, and by changing the balance between nitrogen and phosphorus, where phosphorus increases and nitrogen decreases, you can stimulate the plant to set flower buds. This doesn't work for all plants, 
but for many plants it does. And all this from a simple question. A simple question on what fertilizer should I use? Um, whereas in fact, I'm just telling you it doesn't matter all this much, because for the plant, it's all the same. It's not completely true though. So, do check in later. I might do another fertilizer video where I'll explore the six different types of fertilizer there are, when to use them, when not to use them, and what the differences are. But until then, um, if you like my channel, hit subscribe as usual, share the video, and I do apologize, it has become a bit of an academic lecture. Next time, I'll try to do better.